<sighs> so last night I did a video where I discussed how I'm not anti-hitting, and I'm not. So the Tom Sestito hit has raised that old question. As a player with the puck, how much responsibility do you have for a hit you take? And it's a tough call. It is. Because there's all kinds of gray areas. To me, the Sestito hit is suspendable. To others, it's not. Sestito's previous uh, track record didn't help. Also, the fact that Pittsburgh called him up that day just to start a fight didn't help. There's a vigilante justice that occurred in that Winnipeg-Pittsburgh game that I hadn't seen in a long time. And it, and it started with Malkin. And the NHL not doing anything about that. So that's that's the thing. And, and I've said in other videos, you know, about the NHL is taking concussions seriously. Apparently. Finally. Maybe. And the fact that the, the funny part to me is the NHL has taken concussions far more seriously than they used to. They are suspending for hits that didn't used to be even penalties. And it, it is happening. Some of these hits that you look at and go, oh, I don't know, that's borderline and dirty. 20 years ago, they let it go. Pretty much anything went 20 years ago. As long as you didn't leave your feet. And as long as the puck was in the vicinity of the play, you're good. They've changed the protocol for concussions. They've changed the protocol with suspensions. Which lends itself to support the claims of those who are currently suing the NHL in the class action lawsuit that fans don't talk a lot about. So what do we do? So let's rewind the Enstrom hit. Let's say, alright, Enstrom saw Sestito coming in and he turned his back. Now you have to get into Enstrom's head. If Enstrom's thinking, all right, I'll absorb this, he's pretty dumb. And he's paying for it with a concussion and apparently facial fractures. And, and I, I don't see a guy who's got that many games in the NHL being that stupid. I don't. He's been... Um, a mainstay on the Winnipeg Blue Line and was with the Atlanta Blue Line before that. And you could say, well, he's been injured before. Uh, a guy being injury prone and hit like that, maybe. Again, I'm, I'm trying to see both sides of this. <laughs> and I can understand both sides. But in the end, the guy delivering the hit He's, he's got to do something different than what he did. Because here's the thing. Sestito says, well, you know, I, I ran him over because that's what happened. But if Sestito's right and all these people that say, oh, no, that's, that's, that's what you do. There's plenty of games where guys turn towards the boards to play the puck and they don't get run over. If this was an instance where the onus is on the puck carrier and... You know, if he turns towards the boards, he's liable to get smashed face first into the glass. It should happen all the time. Because there are plenty of times where you'll see a defenseman in their own zone turn towards the puck to play it out. I even remember there was one night I was playing floor hockey. And I, I turned around. And I did. I, I turned my face towards, towards the wall. And I ate the wall. I came up behind me, two hands right across the back, and I went face first into the wall. And I spent the rest of the night making his life a living hell for it. Because there were no penalties, it was just, you know, just whatever, it was just hockey between, just, you know, floor hockey between guys for three or four hours. I think we played for four hours that night. But I was pissed. And that's just whatever. So, you know, is the onus on me? Because I turn and go, well, he can stop. 
Because here's here's the thing too. For me, what I see a lot of the time is I'll see a defenseman in against the boards with the puck, and the forward comes in to check him, and usually he'll come in and and get the stick in there and try to take the puck away. While one of his teammates gets up at the blue line and tries to block that outlet pass. That's the smart play. And if you can't get there before he gets rid of the puck, and if you can't get in there so you're you're checking him off the puck, then it's it's interference. And if you're just flying at him, it's charging. I don't think charging gets called as much as it used to either. I used to see it a lot. And I don't know if it's that the players are more reserved now than they were, or it just doesn't get called. Part of the part of the deal here is this. Uh, hockey is a very fast game. And a lot of these hits and a lot of these incidences or instances we're looking at it with, you know, step by step, frame by frame, moment by moment. So you know, if we're going to say, oh, well, that's overanalyzing it, then we'll just look at it at full speed. You'll see a lot more suspensions. If you just judge it based on the full speed, you, you're going to get a lot more suspensions. A lot more instances where you're looking, you go, that was brutal. He should be out of the game. Which has happened. Uh, I think of the Colin Miller instant incident where he got thrown out of the game recently. And, you know, in, in the respectable comments of the comment section yeah people made a good exam or a good argument for it not being a dirty hit and i'm perfectly fine with it and colin miller has had a really good season for boston in the second half and i'm, I'm glad he didn't get suspended but in that instance i wanted to seem as unbiased as possible it's like it's boston i better do a video on this or i'm gonna look like an ass which does happen and so in this case as a hockey fan, I'm just saying we're we're in a place now where uh, the NHL is expanding into new markets with with Vegas, potentially Seattle. There's talks of other you know moves and whatever going on. Whatever happens with the Coyotes, wherever they end up, it could be a brand new home for them. Likely still in Arizona, but it's still. If you move 50 miles down the street, you're still, hey, come up and watch us. You're still trying to bring in new fans that probably weren't making that 50-mile trip. You're, you're trying to get those casual fans in. So, uh, and I said this in the video, too, where I talked about me not being against hitting. The NHL wants to get that vigilante justice out of the game. And those hits bring them in. So... Is there an onus on the puck carrier? Absolutely. Guy gets caught in the trolley tracks. And right now we can all agree that's legal. I think the NHL is going to make it so it's not. I think where the NHL is headed is it's going to be if you make contact primarily with the head, you're in trouble. And I'm saying primarily. So if I go in and I'm, I'm hitting a guy and the first spot that gets hit is here, not the chest. I'm going to the penalty box for two minutes. Regardless. Regardless of the hit, if it's incidental, I don't think they're going to care. And people want to get all up in arms about it, but in terms of penalties, this is nothing new for the NHL. Look at the uh, delay of game rule. How many times have we watched a defenseman try to ring it off the glass? It clears the glass. That's a penalty. He doesn't mean to do it. There's no intent. But the incident takes place, and he's sitting. And I, I think with the hits, I think that's what's going to happen, too. I think intent's going to get taken out of it, and it's going to be, if this takes place, you're going to the box. So hits that are legal right now are going to get called. The same as, I can remember a time when a, if a defenseman put the puck over the glass, it wasn't a penalty. And I don't remember all kinds of fans saying, oh, that should be a penalty. The NHL went, penalty. It's like the trapezoid behind the, the net for the goaltenders. It's crap. The trapezoid should be obliterated. But the NHL brought it in. 
we got to stop goalies handling the puck behind the net. That's right. Because you got to have those races for the, 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 the icings, and you got to have guys getting blasted into the end boards rather than a goalie coming out and playing the puck. That's a much better result. I even agreed with Darren Pang when I was watching a game the other night where he said they got the trapezoid backwards. The goalie should be allowed to come out and play it at the corners. He shouldn't be allowed to play it behind the net. And I went, holy crap, he's right. That would be so much more entertaining. The goalie comes out to play it, and he misses it, and it's like, oh crap, it's behind my net, I can't touch it. That opens up so many more plays, and it would wipe out 90% of those races for icing calls. And it's true, you know, uh, Marty Berdur, Marty Turco, the Marty problem, where they'd come out and play the puck, and it was just, you know, it was it was aggravating, where if you dump the puck in, Turco would come out, bank it right back out. Great puck handler. Ed Belfour. So the NHL went, well, there's too much of this. So we're just going to go in and change the rules. And I think it's going to happen with hitting. And much like me not liking the trapezoid, there are people out there right now that will defend hits that are going to be stuck. They're going to be stuck. They're going to be stuck angry with the NHL because hits that they like are going to go by the wayside. I'd be very interested to know what you guys think in the comments below. Again, uh, as long as they're respectful comments and we can have a respectful discussion, awesome. I really aim for that with this channel. This channel's got a lot bigger. So it is getting harder and harder for me to completely moderate everything, but I'm doing the best I can. Uh, I've installed some filters as well. So there's certain things that if they get in a comment, you hit post, that post isn't going anywhere. Uh, I've had to do that. I've been like, all right, we're 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 done. This has to stop. Anyways, uh, again, I'd, I'd be interested to know what you guys think in the comments below. Um, as the hitting is going to ramp up and the plays are going to ramp up. Here's where I'm at. I think you get rid of the delay game on the defenseman. I think you get rid of the trapezoid. And if it wasn't for the concussions and if it wasn't for the lawsuit, I'd be totally fine with the NHL just leaving the hitting the way it is. But I'm telling you, if you think it's bad now, it is going to get stronger. Especially if the NHL loses this class action lawsuit. If the players win millions of dollars for concussion symptoms that the courts deem the NHL is responsible for, you guys think hitting's getting taken out now. That's when fighting gets taken out of the game. That's when fighting is gone. Because some of these guys who are arguing about concussions and a lot of the players who are no longer with us, Rick Rippon, uh, Darren Bugard, or Derek Bugard, um, it, you know, John Cordick, Bob Probert, they were all enforcers. They were all enforcers. And if, if the NHL is deemed culpable in what happened to any of these guys, And there are others. I know right now there's people who are going, well, what about, what about... If the NHL is deemed culpable by the, by the courts, fighting's gone. And the NHL will say, we are doing this for the safety of the players. And when you hear it, what it really means is, we are doing this because we don't want to be in a libel position again. It's business. All right. So that's it. I'm done on my soapbox for today. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll talk to you all again soon. And don't forget to hit like and subscribe. It's a very popular thing to do, and I'm, I'm very impressed with where the subscriber totals are at. I need to make a little graphic for 3,000 subscribers because I know we're going to get there. And I thank every last one of you for subscribing and every last one of you for commenting. If I haven't responded directly to a comment, don't, don't be afraid to make that same comment on another video because I'll likely pick it up the second time. And don't be afraid to send me messages. Uh, I am going to... Uh, I'm going to be doing a video soon where I answer messages that have been sent to me on my channel. I'll be doing that again. Um, that seems to work. And I'll, I'll do it again soon. Uh, if, if not tonight, then tomorrow. Okay? Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you all again soon.